Good evening, Bahamas. You're tuned in to MB12, broadcasting from Cable 12 Studios on Robinson Road. Coming up tonight in news, the Customs Department losing millions each year to smuggling. Wasted water amounts to millions in revenue losses for the government. Plus, back-to-school tips from the police. We've got those stories and so much more coming up. I'm Paige McCartney, and MB12 starts right now. Welcome once again to MB12. More than half of the government's total income comes from revenue collected by the Customs Department. However, the Customs Controller revealed today that the department is losing tens of millions of dollars annually as a result of fraud. His comments came as the government and Inter-American Development Bank signed two loan agreements. The government is borrowing $24 million from the IDB for a trade sector support program, which will make the Customs Department more efficient. And they're also borrowing for a social safety net reform program. Vani Toot reports. Customs Comptroller Charles Turner estimates that the Bahamas Customs Department loses around $100 million each year in revenue. Officials are now taking steps to address this issue. The Bahamian government signed a $16.5 million loan agreement with the Inter-American Development Bank this morning to fund a trade sector support program. During this morning's loan signing ceremony, Turner revealed that the smuggling of tobacco products and bear continues to have a huge impact on revenue collection. From our recent interviews and doing our analysis, it is of the view that there could be as much as $100 million being lost a year, uh, especially with, the, with regards to the tobacco products. We have to believe that we are losing some $20 million with regard to the tobacco products. Uh, there is a high smuggling of bears, and we believe that with respect to the bears, there could be as much as five to ten million dollars here being in loss of revenue. Turner says the department would be in a better position to prevent the massive leakage of funds once it can identify high-risk importers. Well, that's where the multi-million dollar trade sector support program comes in. Minister of State for Finance Michael Halkidis says a key component of the program is modernizing customs operations. We're borrowing $16.5 million to modernize the customs organization, put in a new uh, system and modernize the trade sector support program. The objective being that we will be able to Im increase the amount of revenue that customs generate. They uh, will be able to... Um, they will be able to deliver services um, more easily, more effectively to the public. That should lead to an ease of doing business, less frustration, etc. Once the program is implemented, Turner predicts the Customs Department would see a reduction in the loss of revenue within a year or two. However, Halkita says he doubts the government would ever be able to eliminate fraud. So it's not only Bahamas that may be tempted to um, circumvent Customs. But, so uh, what I mean is, obviously we'd like to eliminate it, but um, we, in reality you probably would never completely eliminate uh, fraud, but the intention is to minimize it and, and reduce it to, to an absolute minimum. And as well be able to forecast the revenue, be able to have um, more accurate data that will help you to forecast and that will help you to audit and, and um, you know, have better statistics, etc. According to the IDB loan report, Customs currently collects over 50 percent of the government's total income. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonnie Toot. Well, as mentioned, in addition to borrowing money from the IDB to modernize the Customs Department's operations, the government also signed a loan agreement today to fund the $7.5 million social safety net reform program. The number of Bahamians seeking social assistance from the government has more than doubled in recent years, according to Social Services Minister Melanie Griffin. She says as many as 10,000 people come forward each year seeking forms of some form of assistance. And that's only in New Providence. The director is saying in 2004 it used to be about 3,000 persons. It's now between eight to 10,000. Well, straight across the board, yes. Mm -hmm. And that's yearly. yearly. That's annual. 
Providence. That's just New Providence. So when you add the family islands to that, that would certainly be more. IDB representative for the Bahamas Astrid Winter says the initiative will address educational deficiencies and help to consolidate all existing social services programs and promote lifestyle changes by struggling Bahamian families. Griffin says she thinks this initiative will also revolutionize the delivery of welfare assistance in the Bahamas. Eligible families will receive assistance while meeting the demands of transitioning to a healthier lifestyle to combat the alarming rates of obesity in the country. And we're talking here specifically of childhood obesity, which leads to a number of um, debilitating conditions later in life. Change can be exciting. And in this case, we will be putting in place a social safety net for and on behalf of the people of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, which we expect will improve the delivery of services and break the cycle of poverty for so many struggling families in our country. And in other news tonight, the Water and Sewage Corporation continues to lose millions of dollars in revenue through water loss. While addressing the Rotary Club of West Nassau this afternoon, Corporation General Manager Glenn Laville revealed that those losses have increased and detailed how a five-year plan will hopefully change that trend. Nakia DeVoe has details. Six million gallons of water are lost in New Providence each day. That's about $16 million in losses for the corporation each year. LaVille says the corporation hopes to change that with a newly implemented plan. Right now, non-revenue water or water losses is about 56% of what we supply. By the time we finish this project, it will be down to about 20 to 22%. So that will be a major step for the corporation. Those losses represent a 7% increase since 2010, when the corporation's non-revenue water loss was at an estimated 49%. According to LaVille, water can be lost through theft, billing or leakages. The corporation receives $30 million a year from the government to offset operating costs, meaning that WSC's assets continue to deteriorate while expenses continue to go up. If we maintain the status quo as it is, over the next 10 years, we will require $400 million in subsidy from the government. And that is just to keep our operation going. That's if we make no improvements whatsoever. So at the end of that 10 years, we will still be as bad from an efficiency standpoint as we are now. The Water and Sewerage Corporation received an $83 million loan from the Inter-American Development Bank in December to revamp the corporation with infrastructure upgrades, repairs and staff training. $49 million of that loan is dedicated to addressing water loss. WSC has already introduced some of the cost-cutting measures like the skater system, a remote-controlled and data acquisition system. Water supply staff will no longer have to go out to check levels at reservoirs and pumping stations. We recently installed a system and now we're at the stage where at our control center we're able to see what the levels are. We have a camera system, we're able to physically see what is going on in the station and we also get notifications and alarms if something happens. So what that does for us, it allows us to react a lot more quickly and efficiently when there are problems in the system. Rotary West members listened as LaVille explained that the corporation is also looking at implementing automated meter reading systems with a pilot project currently underway and hopes to expand the project in two to three years. We are now testing in the Garden Hills area, we're doing a pilot project where we will have a system attached to the meters and all of the information will be downloaded at the head office and automatically going to the billing system. So it not only makes us more efficient, but it also helps the customer. We can actually monitor what your consumption is and whenever there's an exception, if the consumption is abnormally high, we can inform you well ahead of time before you get a bill so that you can see whether or not there are any leaks within your household. Also included in the plan is wastewater rehabilitation, a robust public relations campaign, regulatory framework, and a performance agreement with the government. LaVille says the plan seeks to reduce water loss from 6 million gallons a day to about 2 million gallons a day by 2017. Reporting for NB12, I'm Nakia DeVoe. 
Well, tomorrow marks the official resignation date of North Abaco Member of Parliament Hubert Ingram from the House of Assembly. On July 25th, the former Free National Movement leader and Prime Minister presented his letter of resignation to Speaker of the House, Dr. Kendall Major, but said it would not be effective until August 31st. With the North Abaco seat empty, a by-election would result. Prime Minister Perry Christie says he will make an announcement on the date of that by-election not too long after tomorrow.